Hello and welcome to yet another Outwardly Experience. Today we will be talking about modular coding. So, first of all, what is modular coding? Modular coding means that instead of writing one script or one code <clears throat> for the entire game mod, we will divide it into files, lots of separate files. Now, you might ask me, why would we do that, Ronnie? Why would we divide one file into more than one files? Well, the basic reason is data structure. If you don't know what data structure is, well, it's basically a structure of data, how it is stored in various files, <clears throat> folders. And for the sake of modularity, why would we do it? Why do we even need modulation in code? So that if we want to find something, Let's say I want to find player data. Instead of going through, let's say, 60,000 lines of code, which is inside one script, one .cs file, I will simply keep it inside another folder named player data in a player.cs file. And I, could, I will know that anything related to players will be in that folder. So first of all, in modular coding, the first thing that comes into play is the game mod folder. In this case, bridge resources, we have one, two, three, four different game mods. My current game mod that I work with is test. So whatever .cs or whatever is inside the folder, which is in the format .cs, if it is present inside this test folder, test game mod folder, then it will automatically be called if, uh, depending on the namespace. If they have the same namespace, then it will be automatically called. However, if they have different namespace, then we will need to call it explicitly. And I'll tell you all about implicitly and explicitly. Right now, we have three different .cs files. All of them have one thing in common, a server event resource start. So public void on resource start and API console output. So this will output main resource is up we have a util.cs same it also has a server event resource start but this will output util resources up and then we have another absolute absolute god my pronunciation absolute.cs this also has a resource start event but this one will print absolute resource resource is up wow what is wrong with me now the key point in all these files are that the namespace for all three, all three files are same. Namespace, test. So in this case, the server event with the, it goes alphabetical order. So in this case, A comes first, then M, then Util. So if I were to compile and run this, it would first print I'll show you. Absolute resource is up, then it will print main resources up, then it will print util resources up. So it is going in an alphabetical manner. First A, then M, then U. However, if, let's say, in this case, we have GTA uh, main.cs, we have the namespace test. Let's just change the namespace of our absolute. Uh, absolute will change the namespace to something let's say xyz now it will print on the order will be relied uh, dependent on the alphabetical order of the namespace so since the namespace of ma main is test and in the namespace of absolute absolute god damn it is xyz and t comes before XYZ. So first it will print main resources up, then util resources up, and then absolute resources up because XYZ comes after test, the first letter. I'm talking about the first letter of the namespace. So let's just try it. And you can see now it is the console output is dependent on the alphabetical order of the namespace. So in this case, main resources up comes first instead of absolute resources up. So this is how it is dependent. 
uh, on the namespace name. Now let's say I'll change the namespace back to test. But now we will add a folder, 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 add folder. Let's call this player data. And we will add a file of C sharp class and call this data. And in this, we will just add another first. Let me reference GTA network API. And then we will just add another server event. Again, the same thing. We'll use the same thing event dot resource start public void on resource start. In this case, I'll just print an API util dot console output. Same thing, um, player data resource is up. And then we'll start the server. In this case, okay, let's see, absolute main util. I missed something, definitely. Forgot to put this as script. Let me close that. Save, run. Ah, oh, silly mistakes. So now you can see, now what happens is, whatever comes in the depth, by depth I mean whatever is inside a folder, this is level two now, player data is inside depth level two. All these are in depth level one, like it is in the root folder of the game mod, but this is inside another folder. So if I were to call this, uh, it is a D. The name of the CS, the file, is D. So it should have been, if it was in alphabetical order, it should have been absolute resource is up, then third data resource is up, then main resource is up, then util resource is up. But instead, since these three are in the root folder of the game mod, so the alphabetical order will be followed by these files. Then the level 2 depth which is inside another folder then this one will print which is d data data.cs the namespace is saying same, same test but it has another layer to it clear data this is the name of the folder as you can see over here clear data is the name of the folder test is the name of the namespace this is just a normal server event of on resource start and it prints clear data so what have we learned so far? If any file is inside the game mod folder, then it will automatically be called. Depending on the first, it depends on the alphabetical order of the first level depth files. Then if let's say we change the name of the namespace, then whatever namespace comes before, like in the alphabetical order, it comes first, the namespace. That'll run first. Otherwise, depends on the depth of the file, which depth it is in. If it's in the root folder, it'll pop up first. If it is in another folder of the game mod, it'll come afterwards. So that's it, that's it for today. And this is how you do modular coding. Peace.